All right, let's continue on and take a look at a couple different scenarios here. Uh, we have the example of number nine, okay, N2H4. This is a little bit different because along this way, we've always seen one element that's just in the core. What happens when we have a situation like this? So I always start with just drawing out my Lewis structures and see what happens. And I'm going to put my S's over on this side, just to kind of see what happens. And I've got four total hydrogens. So I'm going to spread them out like this. Okay, don't know where it's going, I'm just going to see what happens. Well, first of all, when I see uh, I've got fewer of these, what happens if I link them together? Now be careful, don't treat it like nitrogen where we just bond all three together at once with my sigma and pi bonds. Let's just link them up once and we, when we do that we see we have one sigma bond here and now I can work on my sigma bonds of other things. Okay, so actually this is a pretty simple thing. It's a little bit novel for us because I have a chain of elements with my hydrogens coming off here and hydrogen coming off here. Okay, Now, by a chain, I, I mean this. The term is called a catenation. Catenation just means chain of things, so they become these long sequences of things. We see this in nutrition all the time and other more complex molecules. But when we see that we have a, a nitrogen 1 and a nitrogen 2, we can still apply the same terms. Around nitrogen 1, I'm still seeing three uh, shared pairs, one unshared pair. So all of those rules that we had before um, that would tell me that this is a pyramidal angle, I could still figure out these angles and the same thing with this one. So it's just, you know, combining some terms together. I would say that this is going to be polar because I see on this side I see uh, an accumulation of hydrogens but are of electrons but on this side here and here I don't see those so those would be again polar now another example um, we would go back to a, a, another term that we used and that would be with hybridization and I want you to see something with my carbon tetrachloride versus So it looks like this, that's my number 10 versus my number 11. I have a hydrogen, doesn't matter where the hydrogen goes by the way, it could be on top, it could be on bottom, wherever you want it to be, um, that is fine. But if I analyze these two side by side, I see that first of all carbon has hybridized, I see that on this side it is 4 and 0 around the core. Okay, 4 and 0, and around this side I also have 4 and 0. So the names and the shapes are going to be the same. However, this guy, because there's an equal distribution of electrons all the way around, the electrons are equal, this would be a nonpolar molecule, where this one, we have one spot that is going to be uh, uh, electron heavy here, here, and here, and electron light here, so this one is going to be polar. Okay, remember we're thinking about it in terms of um, having electron heavy versus uh, electron uh, equally distributed. So this is polar, this would be nonpolar because it is equal all the way around. Okay, it's not charged or anything like that. Number 12, taking a look at that one, we have two carbons. Let's just go ahead and hybridize that guy right away. We're so used to it, and we see six, hi uh, six hydrogens. Well, let's form a catenation first, and then we see one, two, three, four, five, and six. Around this carbon, we'd have four and zero. Around this carbon, we'd have four and zero. So we see tetrahedral. Since it is hydrogen all the way around, that would be considered nonpolar because it's the same all the way around. Now, the next one that we'd see is number 13, which is actually hydrogen peroxide. I see oxygen, there's two of them. I'll put my S's over on this side just for the sake of it. Let's do uh, catenation first, and I see hydrogen, I'd see this, oh, there's one there, and there's one there. Now there's nothing that says that both of them have to go down. Okay, I could have oxygen where the uh, P's are there, I'd have one hydrogen going up, and one going down. That doesn't matter. That's all saying the same thing because around this oxygen I'd see two and two. Around this oxygen I'd see two and two. It doesn't matter how we draw it out here, we can still analyze it in the same way. Let's take a look at number 14, PCl3. Phosphorus has, oops, one too many, has the exact same Lewis structure as nitrogen. So it's going to be coating out exactly the same as this one. The only difference that we'd see is that these chlorines 
would have electrons around them, whereas the hydrogen did not. And so notice that I have 3 and 1. This is not symmetrical, so this is going to still be a polar molecule. Okay, unshared pair, any unshared pair means it's going to be polar automatically. Now, number 15. This one probably caused people some problems because we have this for issue. Okay, we've got nitrogen. I'll put my S's over here. If I form, like I've been saying all along, catenation, we have one oxygen to plug in. Okay, so what do we do? A lot of people are going to do this. That guy is going to share there, that guy is going to share there, that guy is going to share there for a pi bond. So you end up with this with two unshared pairs forming like this. That is completely fine, guys. Uh, look around here. We have two sigma bonds. Don't ever count a pi bond. He just brings it in tighter. So around this nitrogen, we'd have two shared, one unshared. Around this oxygen, we'd have two shared, two unshared, two shared, one unshared again. Okay, so that is one possibility. But I just want to throw this out for another possibility. Okay, when we take a look at my, uh, at my example on this one, there is another way we could do this. And that would be to, let me put my nitrogens here. And let me put this here, okay? And so if we take a look at that, we could see what if we did something absolutely crazy. Remember, oxygen already has six. What if we hybridized in reverse this? And so we'd open up this side completely, and what if these guys every once in a while travel down this way. Oxygen would have everything to gain, but nitrogen wouldn't gain anything out of it. So we could actually do a triple bond. Like this, okay? Now, this is really advanced stuff. The only reason I wanted to show this to you is because there is actually another example where we'd have one sigma, two pi bonds. This is actually, they're both being shared toward oxygen. Oxygen is giving nothing to this nitrogen, okay? So that's important to note there um, in, in how that might behave. Now, what, the only reason I give you this, because I would expect almost everybody to come up with this one, this is an example of something called an isomer. Okay, now we actually use these all the time. Sometimes we create this situation because between these two nitrogens, this is incredibly strong because we got two pi bonds along with the sigma bond, stronger than this bond. So those nitrogens are never going to be lost. However, this is a weak point because, again, nitrogen is getting nothing from this relationship. It's simply just every once in a while borrowing both of those over to oxygen. So even light would come down and maybe disrupt this. And we can actually structure this in medicine to deliver a, a certain medicine to a specific site, changes the chemistry of that cell, and automatically pops it off. So it's a method of delivery a lot of times. This one would be actually pretty stable. And if we wanted to take some naturally occurring thing, we alter it a little bit in chemistry, and we actually create a little bit more stable, same structure, and that's what isomers really are. It is still N2O, but we have a couple options, okay? So don't get hung up on those things. Know that isomers do exist. We always go back to our uh, octet rule, okay? H2S, let's finish this off. H2S is going to be the same thing as water, okay? So they're going to be similar um, in, in, in shape and similar in polarities. Phosphorus, again, we see that one. We have three hydrogens coming off of each of those. And then last one is Cl and F. And so my F is just going to bond right there. And so we see those. Now, again, I, I bring up this example because remember, to, some people see only two elements and they get worried about what type of shape or angle. This is only two points, so that's simply just a line. So we don't have to worry about any of those things. It is simply just um, a, just a chemical bond, and you see that it is evenly distributed, so it would be nonpolar, but there is no shape or angle that goes with that one.